coming up next on NMZ Live TV. Wherever God has placed us, we are to shine on. We must shine wherever we are. And wherever we go, the light of Christ must shine through us. Up next on NMZ Live TV. It is a privilege and an honor to have you worshiping with us here today at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We know that you could have been viewing other programs, but we thank God that you have chosen to worship with us during this time as we present to you God's Word for today. The New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is located on Blue Hill Road, just south of Cowpen Road on the beautiful island of New Providence in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Our senior pastor is Pastor Alfred Stewart, and I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, pastor of the children's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. There are those of you who are viewing this program. You may be a member, you may be a visitor, you may just be a follower of the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And you would like to reach out to us so that you can collect, that we can collect your tithe, your offering, or whatever gift you have. There are some of you who give to the feeding ministry and to other ministries here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Here's how you can reach us. You may phone us at the following contact. 1-242-341-1804. That's 1-242-341-1804. 1804. Or you may WhatsApp us at 1 242 341 3726. That's 1 341 3726. And if you have not saved our WhatsApp number in your phone, we invite you to do it so that you can see, receive updates and messages from the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. There are some of you who would like to email us. And here's how you do it, new.mount.zion at gmail.com. That's new.mount.zion at gmail.com. And we ask that you like our social media pages, whether you're watching us on YouTube, on Instagram, or whatever other platform you're using. And if you need to, we invite you, in fact, not need to, but we invite you to share this message today and any other message that we have had with your family, friends, co-workers. And when you're sharing it, we just ask that you do a simple backslash, the new Mount Zion, backslash, the new Mount Zion. Each of us, God has called to give a special ministry to. And Jesus, when he spoke to his disciples in Matthew 5, he told us that we must let our light shine before men. Today, our special message comes entitled, Shine On. And just before I come at our message today, Shine On, we invite Jesenia Thompson, who will minister in song. And following the ministry of Jesenia Thompson, I will come with the message entitled, Shine on.
God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, yeah. You know just what to do. You know just what to do. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do yeah you know just what to do you know just what to do you know just what to do and I will love God. 
invite you to take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 5 verses and we're going to look again at verses 13 to 16 but today we are looking in more detail at verses 14 to 16. And we're going to ask that we stand as we read God's word. Beginning at verse 13, it reads, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith it shall be salted. It is thenceforth good for nothing, but is cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Father, right now we just thank you for these words to remind us as believers that we are to shine on, that we are to shine in a darkened world. Help us today that as we go through these words that you have given, that they would be a source of edification to your people. But more importantly, Lord, they will bring glory to your name. We bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Reverend Edmund Chan of Covenant Evangelical Free Church in his sermon entitled, What Does It Mean to Be the Light of the world states, and I quote, the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus's manifesto of kingdom discipleship. Everything else that Jesus taught in this grand manifesto is entirely anchored upon our understanding of these two metaphors. Jesus masterfully employed these two striking metaphors to convey something fundamental about radical discipleship, end quote. You see, my brothers and sisters, we must come to an understanding that when Jesus used these two metaphors to tell us how we as disciples are to live, he is referring to two distinctly different things, yet he is using these two distinctly different things to tell us how we are to live. In the first metaphor that we dealt with last time, Jesus uses the analogy of, or of salt of the earth. And in this analogy, what he is saying is, he is called, this is what he is calling us to be. In the second metaphor that we're going to deal with today, Jesus is stressing what he is calling us to do. Now, a lot of times we read these and we're thinking that they may be two distinctly different things. But you notice there's no either or there. There's only an and. The only conjunction, there's the and. 
He says, what you are to be and what you are to do. You see, whereas both of these metaphors deal with discipleship, the first salt of the earth relates to our identity in the world. In the world, as we said it last time, we ought to be salt. But today, the metaphor that we're going to use, light of the world, relates to the believer's influence on the world. You notice now, salt of the earth is what we are, our identity. We are salt. But he says, today we are to influence the world as light. Our text, as we stated earlier, comes from, are found in verses 14 to 16 of Matthew chapter 5. And for a topic we have chosen, shine on. You see, as stated earlier, the second discipleship metaphor, in this second discipleship metaphor, Jesus informs us that we are the light of the world. And that as light, we must continually shine. You see, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus commanded us that we are to shine on, he is referring that we are to shine on in every aspect of our lives. Too often we as believers believe that we only supposed to shine on this aspect or that aspect or maybe back here. But notice when he is saying every aspect of our lives, we are to influence those around us. And to help us to fully understand, Jesus uses two analogies, two th simple things, I think that we all can relate to. But before we get there, we have to understand. You see, a lot of times we're looking at our lives and we think that things are going rough. And so when things are rough, we believe that we should not shine. When we are suffering from difficulties, medical issues, financial woes, sometimes we as believers feel that at that point, we are not to shine so the world can see. But Jesus is telling us no matter what it is, whether it's good, bad, or not so good, our light is to shine. And these two analogies that he uses, the first one, we find in the second half of verse 14. And he uses the analogy of a city on a hill. When you think of a city on a hill, or even a house on a hill, it is exposed for all to see it. You ever drove past a house on a hill, and I even use the term house here, I think, because we understand it better on an island where the city of Nassau is kind of low level. But, but if you look at government house, when you pass there, you can't help but notice government house. It's sitting on a hill. If you're driving, whether it's east or west on this island, you will notice any house that sits on a hill. And here Jesus is saying, a city on a hill, in its elevated position, it shines out in all directions. Think about a city on a hill. Let's bring it back to our local environs. Before gas prices went to where they are today, Christmas time came, and I remember as a child, and even with my daughter when she was a, a child, we would go driving, looking at the lights. And you notice any house that's sitting on a hill or any kind of rise, when that house was lit up, everyone around can see it. When gas was 
such good rates, we would go driving and you would see that house way in the distance and try to figure out how am I going to get there so I could see that house. See, that's what Jesus is saying. Just like that city up there is shining so everyone can see it, same too is we as believers, our lives must shine so the world can see the light of Christ. But to better help us understand, Jesus goes with a second analogy in verse 15. He uses the analogy of a lamp. You see, just in case that city that's sitting on the hill, someone may not be able to relate to it. We all can relate to when there is a lamp. Now, some of you may be old enough to remember the kerosene lamp or the lantern. Or for some of our younger people, if you use a flashlight, any kind of light in a dark room it allows you to see. And you notice the light, when we light that lamp, we don't hide it. We put it, and sometimes we may have used the old-fashioned lantern or something, you may have to hang it on a peg so everybody can see it. Even now, if you have one light, you may put that light and shine it on something that will reflect it because you want to be able to see. And Jesus is using that example, says, as believers, we are exposed to the entire world and the world must see the light of Christ in us. Whether you have a good day or a bad day, and sometimes we use all kind of excuses why our light should not shine. Whether that child of yours got on your last nerve, or your boss did something that totally irritated you, or your coworker, Or that person who is driving in that vehicle in front of you just decides to suddenly stop. Or the person who is driving that little small car, you know, the little small ones that seem to go everywhere, all the time, no matter where you are, and just scoot in front of you. I know some of us, for economic reasons now, we switch into those little small cars. But even them, when they're on the road, there's the point sometimes you look at them and you see, you will look in your rear view mirror, where does car go and there's a line of traffic here? There's a, I'm, there's a line of traffic here and this little car come try to squeeze through. Even in then he says, let your light shine. Listen to how the apostle Paul reminds us. That no matter how long we live on this earth, and he's reminding us in Ephesians 5 that we must have an influence on the people around us. Remember we said this light was to be, this second metaphor we used was an influence. We are to have an influence on the world. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Ephesians 5, 8. He says, for you were once darkness. But now you are the light of the Lord. In other words, one time ago, our whole lives was li lived in sin. Sin controlled us. But he says, and he went on and said, the light, but you are now light in the Lord. You notice where it says, we were in darkness, now we are in the Lord. And so he says, live as children of light. 
And in order to fully get a grasp of that, notice he says, when he says, we are to live as children of light. And I understand this children of light. Remember how John described Jesus in John um, 1. When he was talking about Jesus, and he says, you know, stars, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He goes on in verses 4 and 5, and he says, in him was life. And notice what he says, and that life was the light of mankind. King James says, the light of men. The light shines in darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it, or the King James says, the darkness comprehendeth it not. You see, when light shines, it dispels darkness. As believers, if we are to be the light of the world, that means we are to dispel the darkness that's all around us. You see, my brothers and sisters, as Christians, we are to make the light of truth visible to all. And we make it visible by sharing the gospel, but we also make it visible by living lives that reflect Christ. You see, when we let the light of Christ shine through us, you notice something, we provide direction and guidance for those who are lost and in darkness. Jesus is stating that as Christians, as born-again believers, we must have a visible impact on society and that we are not to hide from the world. You notice in the past when you read, especially in history, those of you like history, you notice, especially in the Middle Ages, you had the monasteries, and the monks lived in the monasteries, and they were apart from the world, and they lived all by themselves, and they had their rituals that they went through, but they did not interact with the world. Jesus said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. Think about it. We live in a world, therefore we have to have an impact on the world that we live in. Again, when we look at our text, and I'm reading now from the New Living Translation, it says, no one puts a lamp, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. The King James says bushel. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand. The King James just said lamp that is placed where it can be seen by all, where it gives light to everyone in the house. I, in the same way, let your good deeds, you notice how he tells us, the same way, let our good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. You see, when we live our lives, there's no such thing we have to understand as a secret agent Christian. And too many of us, I believe, want to be secret agent Christians. We don't want our friends to know that we are Christians. We don't want our family members to know that we are Christians. And if they know, we don't want them to think that we are radical. We believe that as believers, we must just and we, um, we don't go into the highways and the byways. On our jobs, do we live a life? You notice Jesus says we got to speak it, but we also got to live it. You notice he says, let your good deeds shine. In other words, as a believer, how I live my life, the world is going to see it. And we got to shine on. We can't be covert Christian. We can't be a clandestine disciple that we undercover. That's why he says, you put the lamp on a lampstand. 
so the whole world can see. Deacon is Pat, that means if the person decides that they're not going to give to Pat Senior Citizen Home, you still say praise God and hallelujah. Because you know that, okay, because I'm a believer and I'm going to preach the gospel to these people in here, that the persons who want to donate may say, but I don't want my money going to no Christian organization or no one who does preach. You know God can have another way, avenue. See, that's how we have to live our lives. The source of our Christian lives is Christ himself. Think about the moon and the sun. You see, just as the moon, and a lot of times, you know, before people thought the moon produced its own light. But just as the moon reflects the light of the S-O-N, we as believers must, sorry, the moon reflects the light of the S-U-N, my mistake. We as believers must reflect the life of the S-O-N. You see, the, when the moon is in that right position, the sunlight comes on and it reflects off, and that's how we could see the moon. And you notice the different positions of the moon, we see all of that. Because according to how the sun reflects, just as believers, we have to always be in a position so that the light of the S-O-N of God can reflect off of us. And being in the right position, it means that we must follow Jesus. We must reflect his love. We must reflect his goodness. We must reflect his grace. We must reflect his kindness. We must reflect his power into the lives of those around us. You see, we shine by staying close to him. And you notice what Jesus said. If we stay close, you're going to remember in John 8. And you notice in the Gospel of John, Jesus talks a lot about himself being light. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. That's a sermon in itself. But will have the light of life. You see, we have to allow the light of God to shine in us, to reflect out to the world. And you notice what he says. Once we do that, Everyone sees our good works. That means people look at us, and you may say, Don't you ain't supposed to judge, but the world looks at the believer and they will make statements as such as, Oh, if that's a Christian, his life is no different than mine, or they will say, I live a life better than him. That means we are not reflecting the light of God in our lives. Some of us use some language that even the vilest of sinners will blush because we believe we need to fit in. We want to be like Peter when Peter in the Garden of Gets, sorry, in, the, in Pilate's court. All of his fisherman language came out so everybody could hear. But you see, our lives must reflect God's light that comes through his son, Jesus Christ. You see, my brothers and sisters, we must come to the realization that God has a mission and a master plan for his church. Remember, the church is not these four walls. The church is we, the believers. God has a mission and a master plan, and it's simple. We must let our lights shine. We must accept that wherever God has placed us, we are to shine on. We must shine wherever we are. 
And wherever we go, the light of Christ must shine through us. You see, if we don't shine, how will the world see the love of Christ within us? Whenever it gets dark around us, we always have a choice. And Jesus reminds us we can curse the darkness or we can light a lamp. If we are to be effective for Christ, we must shine on. We must shine as light everywhere we go. And the purpose is so that the per people around us can see the light of Christ that reflects on us. You see, people should be able to look at us. You're going through all of these problems. What, what, what's different about you? Because when I go through problems like that, man, I get, or oh, I need to go and, and, you know, sometimes I need to go and get a little, you know, a little something to calm my nerves, or I need to go get high, or I need to do whatever. But you're so calm, what, but you're going through hell. That's the opportunity for us to share the good news that Jesus has and has made the difference in our lives. You see, if we allow God to work in our lives, if we allow God to shine wherever he places us, we notice that we shine not because that we are good. We shine because Christ is shining through us. As we stated before, we may have the same problems, the same difficulties, but the joy of the Lord, you see that joy of the Lord in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of problems, it says, is our strength. And when we allow the joy of the Lord to fill us, we will shine best when it is darkest and so my brothers and sisters today i encourage you let your light shine on in this darkened world as we look at our lives to the believer because this message jesus was speaking to believers are we allowing our light to shine or are we trying to hide it so the world cannot know who we are? Remember, when we hide it, what will Jesus say? Depart from me. Who are you? I don't know you. I want us to take an introspective look at our lives. Are we allowing the light of God to shine through us into the world where we live? And I know that there are some of you who do it. But also, to the person watching, or maybe someone in this auditorium, you will say, Pastor Claridge, I can't let the light of Christ shine through me because I have never come to the place where I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. The invitation is open to you today to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If there's one, because it's important in this day and age that we this day and age that we live where things are getting darker and darker we accept we, we extend to you the invitation to accept Jesus the light of the world you know what he says if we walk in the light as he is in the light we then have fellowship if we walk in Christ his light shines through us And before we pray for the believers, 
If there's anyone in here who, need, who has never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, so I ask you just to quickly put your hand up, but all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you have never come to the place where you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, we see that all in here are believers, those watching, whatever social media and platform you are using. We are reminded that Jesus came to save sinners. Sin, and a sinner simply is one who is away from God, who has never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. You are struggling. And the Lord is saying today, I invite you to accept my free gift of salvation. I, accept, I invite you to believe in your heart that I sent my son Jesus to die to pay the price for your sins. I believe he came and he paid the price for my sin. He died on a cross. He was buried, he rose again, and then he ascended into heaven and now is seated at the right hand and he is inviting me to come and I accept this free gift of salvation today. And Father, right now, for that unbeliever, we ask that you touch him. You allow him to see Jesus working in the world, but you allow him to see Jesus calling him, beckoning him to make a choice to follow him. And that person, Lord, we just ask that they would confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. And you promise that when they do that, salvation is theirs. We bless you today, Lord. And for those who are here, maybe in this auditorium, who are watching, have come to the place, Lord, where they realize that they are not allowing their light to shine. They're not allowing that your good works to shine through them. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts because they need to hear from you today. Holy Spirit, even as they, in their own way, pray to you now, we ask that you would bring comfort to them. That you would bring spiritual release to them. And that they would continually live lives that are pleasing to you. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. It has been a privilege and a pleasure to have you worshiping with here with us today at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And as we leave, we ask God's richest blessings to be upon you, that his mercy to shine upon you, and his grace always be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, and it has been my pleasure to serve as your host for today.